This day edition, Gold and Black Live. We've outkicked our coverage with Sean Pugh joining us. Uh, this is our behind the scenes show today. I'm really looking forward to it because not only is Sean being our guest in segment one, Michaela Pat will join us in seg segment two. And uh, Sean is the character coach. We could hire him. I think he would consult for us at Golden Black. I don't know what his rate would be, <laughs> but we always need character, director of player development. Interesting story. And, uh, and uh, again, we're looking also to talk to Michaela Pat, who comes kind of from a different angle at, behind the scenes at Purdue, uh, director of content strategy. And innovation, i got to ask her, and she just walked in, so she's going to have 15 minutes to figure the answer to this question. Well, how do you direct innovation? That's going to be good to hear. And Michaela, a very interesting person in both shaping Purdue athletes and, and the Purdue experience. Sean, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me, Alan. Yeah. I'm very blessed to be here. Well, Sean, it's interesting because, you know, your experience, uh, uh, you've been through all, we talked a little bit off air, where you, where you came from, a native of Huber Heights, Ohio, Dayton area. Yes, sir. You played, got a chance to go to go to Western Kentucky. Just tell us a little bit about about your upbringing and kind of what, where did you, where'd you develop your love for football, for, uh -huh. first and foremost, because that had to kind of be the start of it, I assume. Right, right. Well, um, uh I have a wonderful mother. Yeah. Okay, that's where it starts. That starts. Fantastic mother, and you know we didn't have a choice growing up. You're going to be active in something. Yes. Yeah. And uh, mom made us go outside, things like that. Well, uh, just over time, I noticed that, um, you know, I really loved athletics. I love sports, and uh, was actually pretty decent at it yeah. as, as at a young age. Well, I loved basketball at yeah. first. Actually, that was that was one of the things I really loved. Well, what happened was everybody started growing this way, and, <laughs> and I was growing this way. <laughs> yeah. So uh, naturally, uh, football became a love of mine, and I'm very, very grateful. I, I went through a very good high school football program. Jay Minton at Huber Heights Wayne yeah. High School uh, really did a lot to to pour into me and the coaches that I had. Not just him. I had a, a great team around me of people that really cared about developing young men and. Um, instilled a passion for the game in me. So that's really, really how that happened. It just, you know, nature took its course and I was growing yeah. and I was being big, I was getting bigger and, you know, football is something that I just uh, ended up doing okay at. Well, you got to Western Kentucky before, long before Jeff Brom did, <laughs> but also tell about you had an interesting coaching, some really big name coaches that have been around you. Tell us about that experience as well. Yes, I uh, was uh, able to go to, uh, you know, went on my official visit to Western Kentucky University and you know, Jack Harbaugh was the coach yeah. at the time, and he's just a passionate individual. Yeah. And anybody wants to play for him if you're around him. And uh, You see how his sons get to be the way they exactly, are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So I, I, I went to Western Kentucky. I was, a, I was an average player on a good day, yeah. let me first say that. <laughs> um, but Coach Harbaugh, Harbaugh retired after my, yeah. my freshman year, and David Elson came in. Yeah. And thankful for David Elson because he believed in me. And um, um, I, played, I played a little. And then I played a lot my senior year, but um, was, was was able to to make an impact on the team. And I wish it was, I, I could say it's because I was a great player. Yeah. And that's not the case. Yeah. <laughs> I had great players around me, but yeah. wonderful experience uh, being at Western Kentucky, being able to play the game that I love, being able to to not have to pay for school, yeah. those type of things that are really a huge blessing. But uh, that's where I, I would say I, that God molded me into a man. Yeah. I, I can say that it, it was a wonderful experience. And you've had that experience also from, and I'm, I'm going to make a leap, say your mom had something to do with your, your, your desire to be a religious person and, yes. and to get, in, get into that as much as possible. How did, and, and you've been a pastor. Uh -huh. Tell us how that all came about and, yeah. and you know, what, uh, what molded, was there an incident, not an incident, but is there a was this something that's been with you since birth or, right, I mean, right. been a big part of your life or yeah. when did that come, come, become a big part of your life? Yes. Um, my mother, uh, as I said, is a yeah. wonderful woman, yeah. a strong woman, raised four kids on yeah. her own. Yeah. Um, and faith was very important yeah. to her and didn't have a choice. Yeah. I was going to church. I was doing yeah. it. And I'm thankful for that. And obviously, growing up, I, I made my own decision to make that important yeah. in my life. But uh, when I went to Western Kentucky, I had a solid foundation. Yeah. My faith was my foundation. And and very thankful that I, I was I was being, uh, apparently I was able to be instrumental, instrumental in some of my teammates' lives yeah. um, in the spiritual aspect uh, going through college. Yeah. Um, and uh, with that being said, uh, you know, when I got done playing at Western, uh, I was able to go to Auburn University and yeah. be a, an intern for their chaplain uh, through the Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, chaplain training program. Um, and then after a year there, uh, some doors were opened. Uh, David Elson created a position as character coach at Western Kentucky, and I was able to go back there in 08. And uh, really, during that time, uh, just really pouring into the guys and helping them grow and being a counselor to them. 
and then also became on a church staff as a pastor at Hillview Heights Church. So a lot of, a lot of stuff happened in a short amount of time, to be quite honest. So <laughs> are your sermons not fire? I mean, I'm going to guess your sermons are very... Uh, uh, Engaging, you're not a fire and brimstone guy. You want to you, when you when you're given a sermon, what do you what's your what not necessarily what's your message, but how do you get how do you what's the key to getting that message across in your view? Well, honesty is yeah. the key to me. Um, uh, I'm not smart enough to come up with <laughs> great slogans and yeah. all these uh, really cool sayings. Uh, you know, obviously, I I'm I am, I am a Bible believing yeah. person, and 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 the words are right there. Yeah. I just got to tell what it says, yeah. but. Um, I'm very honest. I'm very open about myself. Sometimes yeah. a little too open. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> and, it makes uh, you human, though. Right, and and I'm very open and honest about myself, and that's how I connect with with the guys. I, I don't sugarcoat my own personal life. I'm I'm honest about my limitations, with her, which there are plenty. Yeah. Um, but my my when when I talk, when I speak, it's usually I try to be honest. I'm not perfect. Yeah. Um, but I try to be as honest as possible, and I'm very uh, um, open about my own my own struggles and my own uh, shortcomings. You know, David Blau gave one of the great talks really yes. in the history of the Big Ten uh, Media Day or the Big Ten kickoff luncheon two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that impressed me the most is what he said, you know, here, David is a person of Christian faith, mm -hmm. but you've got Muslims, you've mm -hmm. got, you've got uh, some Jewish people, you've got agnostics mm -hmm. and atheists right. in there. How do you make them all work together? I mean, in terms of that, I mean, in terms of, you know, you, not everybody shares your Christian faith. Right, I get that. And right. you, you understand yes, that. Yes, I do. But you've got, a, you've got a team full of 100-some guys that mm -hmm. uh, your job, not only is to make them make a faith part, but to get them to get along. How does right. that work? Right. right. Well, you know, we really, our team, like, guys like David Blau, like, I can't take no credit for that guy. Yeah, right? no, that amazing. guy made a huge impact on my life. Yeah, <laughs> okay, no it was no more doubt. towards him. But it's just loving each other. Just yeah. like he said, everybody's loving each other, you know. We all don't have to agree on everything, yeah. but we all can love each other and respect each other. And one of the greatest things about our team is what we try to do is develop that salt of the earth mentality yeah. with our life preservers, and they're preserving life in each other. That yeah. means they're, they're, they're guys that uh, speak encouragement to each other. They're, they're guys that are truthful to each other. As you know, truth is, yeah. is not always what you want to hear, it's what yeah. you need to hear. They're that guy that knows what's going on in their teammate's life. They're that guy that's not afraid to grab a teammate out of a bad situation, yeah. okay? But... We have a great atmosphere of guys that care about each other, and you know I'm thankful for that. Thankful to be a part of that. But that's how that's how you 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 really navigate through all that. You just love each other and you respect each other, and I think that's what we do a pretty good job of in our program. But how the heck do you reconcile it in a game as violent as football? I mean, in terms of that, you mean, I mean it's it's about impact. It's about hitting the heck out of somebody else. Right. It's a tough person's game. You have to. You find that you have to bring that per, that part out in certain guys, or is, I'm sure everybody's different. But right. is that a is that a rule of thumb with football players, or does it come easily for them, more easily to to be spiritual or to be loving or whatever whatever trait that you'd like to bring right. forth? Well, uh, you know, like I said, I can't take credit for that. I, I think in the in the game of football, it comes natural to care yeah. about each other. Yeah. When you're sweating with somebody, or you're struggling with somebody, or you're battling through through things with somebody, that brings a bond that. That's really unexplainable, you know. Yeah. So some of those things happen naturally. They, they they care about each other because they're 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 spending time together. They're working hard with each other and they're pushing each other. Yeah. And really, it starts up top. It starts at the top with our head coach. Yeah. That's the type of guy that he is. He's a family-oriented guy. He's a guy that really really sets the tone for the atmosphere of our program. And that's people caring about each other, not just on the field but off the field as well. And that really spreads out throughout our program. Yeah. I, I really think we just we, we have a family-oriented atmosphere. It's not just me pouring into the guys uh, uh, spiritually or just um, in life skill. It's it's everybody. It's all hands on deck. One of the things I I say all the time is that if you're insecure or territorial, you'll have a hard time in this program yeah. because it's all hands on deck where everybody's helping each other because it's about pouring into these young men and helping them be who they're called to be at their full potential. And, and not to you know to explain in specific detail, yeah. but some of the challenges you've had. What are what are there some of the you know more difficult situations that you may en encompass with or or have to experience with a a student athlete that's playing? I mean, a death of a fa death of a family member. Or what are the, what are the more challenging things for you to have to deal with from your perspective? Well, that is a really really good question. Um, honestly, every day is something different. You know, it is. It's there are no uncontested layers. <laughs> right, right. right. That, I, right. I'm serious. Yeah. Every day is something different, um, and you know, really, really, what I what I found is if if you if you spend the time 
to, to make those connections with the guys and you show that you care and you show that you care beyond, beyond their performance on the field, um, um, there's, there's always some type of way that you can help. There's always a way that you can pour into their lives it, and, you know, they kind of let that guard down. Yeah. But um, challenges, I mean, really it's hard to pinpoint because yeah. every day there's something different. Guys come from different backgrounds. They come from different situations. They go through different things. Uh, you know, it could be a breakup with a girlfriend yeah. or it could be a death in the family. And, you know, all, all of those things are serious, especially nowadays. Like, it depends on how it affects the, the young man and, and, and what they're going through in their life. But really respecting everyone's struggle, if that may, if you, if, mm -hmm. you know, and not making light of anything, but really, you know, making sure that you take the time and you show that you care. That's, that's one of the biggest challenges is making sure you keep that the main thing. You keep that the most important thing. Hey, what is Sean Pugh like the Monday after a loss at Minnesota where you played poorly? Mm -hmm. Nothing went well right. in terms of that. What do you, do you, and then, and then what is Sean Pugh like? Well, I'm going to add, we'll get it to it later. What he was like <laughs> after the Ohio State game for another reason. Right. But how do you balance those two in terms of, you know, teams have attitudes and they right. have things, right. they have difficulty. How, right. how does right. that work right. for you? Right. Well, I try to stay consistent. Um, and, and, and I'm going to be honest, I, Coach Brom is the best at never too high, never too low, yeah, okay. and staying consistent. Really, our, our focus is we should always strive to be the, best, be the best that we can be. Coach always says, I don't care what the scoreboard says. It's about giving your best, giving your all. See, that's something that's consistent no matter whether you're winning or you're losing. Now, yeah. it sounds great. Yeah. I know, you know, obviously, I understand. obviously there's different challenges that come with those things, but really it's to stay consistent through it all, and it's continue to be faithful in what you do, and that's working your very hardest. That's giving everything that you have, doing your very best to be the best you can uh, be the best you can be. And for me, I'm just continue to always trying to encourage, always trying to encourage. Truthful, like I yeah. said, truth isn't always what you want to hear, but yeah. it's what you need to hear. Um, but I, I'm, I'm just always trying to encourage. That's that's the thing that I'm always trying to be consistent at. Just encourage, encourage, encourage. <laughs> All right, one of the most magical days maybe in the history of Purdue athletics, certainly in the history of Purdue football, October 20th, 2018. It's a great day on the football field if you're a Purdue football fan and, <laughs> and all that, but your experience even tops that uh, on that day. Tell us about that and, and uh, why that was a special day that you'll never forget in the Pew family. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from Ohio too, yeah. so obviously that Ohio State game was, was a huge deal, but for me it was one of the best days of my life because that was when my, my daughter Shamaya was born. Yeah. She was born uh, at 8.30 p.m., so Purdue was ahead, yeah. not by a lot. Right, right, yeah, right, okay. right. She was born at 8.30 p.m. Still on, in doubt at that point. Yeah. Right, on October 20th, and yeah. I was not at the game. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> Some would argue, like, if you, if you ever think I'm a good luck charm, that, that's thrown <laughs> out right there because I wasn't even at the game. I was, I was there with my wife. My wife is a wonderful woman, a strong yeah. woman. Uh, she's been a great mother. Uh, great wife, and uh, we are we are just overjoyed just with the blessing in our daughter Shemaya. So all right, so a couple hours after Shemaya's birth, uh, that game comes to an end. Did you get? A, I mean, did did you get to at least know that it was happening in real time? Right, or, right. Tell us what what that emotion was there. Right. So I, I look at the score um, yeah. uh, after my daughter was born. Every, everything gets settled, kind of, and I look at the score. I said, Oh my, yeah. you know, we're winning. Not that I'm surprised. Yeah. I, I know what we're capable of, yeah. but. We're winning. Yeah. And then I got to hear the last, you know, the the second half of the yeah. of the fourth quarter. Yeah. When things really started to yeah. stretch and get away. But it was a really good experience and we were at a IU Methodist down in, in Indy and uh, of course I had my Purdue stuff on yeah. and the whole hospital was electric. Oh, yeah. Anywhere I went people were like oh my gosh oh my gosh so it was a really cool experience and I you know I'm more so I am my, my baby girl I'm, yeah. I'm excited yeah. about that and and then the game as well it was like man everything just went great that night that's yeah. for sure yeah. it was a <laughs> unbelievable uh, experience for for all of us as well that night also it was an it was an important and uh, and bittersweet to some extent but certainly with Tyler Trent and, yes. and what he and what he meant and the and the magic of that moment when mm -hmm. he was there but talk about that in terms of the, what he meant, but also maybe some of the impact it had that you, at least you perceived or, or, or had a chance to see from, from some of the players this year that got close to him and, and in a situation that ended the way it ended. We all right. knew it was going to, right. but it was, uh, it was one of those uh, experiences that can change somebody's life too. Right, right. Well, you know, really the, the Tyler Trent and the life that he lived and, and everything that he that, – that, that, um, was shown through his life and his faithfulness um, really had a huge effect on our team. When you lose a game like 
Minnesota. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Puts everything in perspective. Yeah. You know, you see his positive outlook. You see his faithfulness to continue to live until the very end and continue to be joyful and appreciate life to the very end. And it puts things like that in perspective to where, okay, we go through a struggle, but we continue to be faithful and we continue to work hard and our guys continue to work hard. And then you win a big game like I did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so really Tyler Trent had a huge impact on our team just in being faithful and being appreciative for life, yeah. okay? And the living every day to the fullest. I saw that in, in all of our young men and how really his, the way he lived his life really, really just poured out into our team. Uh, and that is, that is fact. My, my life personally. Yeah. You know, you realize how selfish you can be or unappreciative you can be. And then I got to go down there with a couple of the guys to yeah. visit him. Yeah, big part of that. He never complained one time. Yeah, no. Yeah, Not one that. time. Yeah. And I probably, I think I just complained uh, right before I walked in about something, uh, something, you know, I was hungry or something. Yeah. I don't know. I'm usually hungry all the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, really, um, uh, just his faithfulness, uh, he was just used in a mighty way to, to um, uh, just, just to be quite honest, just to be a salt of the earth type person. Yeah. That's what he did. That's what he showed. And to make disciples, like the word of God calls us to do, he did that. And I, I'm very thankful to even just get to spend some time with him. Um, but really see the impact that he's made um, in our world. Yeah, no question on that. On that front, that will be forever, uh, mm -hmm. no, no doubt, at least in the, in the Purdue sphere. Leadership, you know, in the athletic department, and Kathy Wright, eager, a good yes. friend of the show. You, yes. were, I could see you guys would be fun, fun working together. Oh She's phenomenal gosh. in yeah. terms of it. Tell us how you work with the, with the wooden leadership, but also, yeah. I mean, you've got to identify leaders as part of this part right, of your experience right. as well. Well, I'll just tell you, just first and foremost, we're. You know, coach is very committed to making sure we develop the complete man, not yeah. just a great football player, but a great husband, great yeah. father, great, great person in the community. And we have a program called the Boiler Swag Program, yeah. uh, Boiler Student Athletes with a Game Plan. And really, Dr. Lacey Carmen Johnson yeah. is really who headed that up. I just do what she yeah. says, to yeah. be quite honest. But uh, um, it's uh, career development, uh, social development, um, it's financial literacy yeah. and leadership, okay? Um, so those are the, the, the four points that we're trying to focus on and making sure that we're pouring into our guys and giving them the resources because we want to make sure that when our guys get done, you know, they don't just get done and move back home and figure out what they're going to do next, okay? Because yeah. if that happens, yeah. we use them, and that's wrong. Yeah. We want to make sure that they're leaving, going off into their career, whether that be the NFL or that be some major company, which thankful a Purdue degree yeah, means a lot, that. okay? Yep. <laughs> right? Uh, and we want to make sure that they know how to do things, okay? So we have really, we're really stepping up our game at that, making sure that we give our, give our guys uh, all the tools that they need to be successful after football, okay? Um, with that being said, there are great people in place. They have great resources in that um, with uh, Dr. Lacey Carmen Johnson and with Kathy Wright Eager with oh, yeah. the John Wooden Leadership Institute and really, really just uh, and, and the emerging leaders that we yeah. have. And then we also do a leadership class uh, um, with, uh, with some of the guys on our team, just yeah. pouring into them and giving them practical tools and, and helping them grow as a leader. Um, so really, uh, the, our guys have so many resources to go to and to help them um, in areas that they need help in. And as you know, Kathy right yeah. here has been a pivotal, no doubt. pivotal uh, resource for the, the whole entire athletic department. And then you have people like Dr. Lacey Carmen Johnson, who has really done a great job. Um, she, she, you know, she came here from mm -hmm. Western Kentucky yeah. as well, and academically with Seth and his staff, and and been really helping out with the career development and overall life skills development, and really putting together the Boiler Swag program that I just assist with. To yeah. be quite honest, yeah. Last question, and I, you know, it's the thing where Jeff Brom is a results-oriented guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you can't not be and be a head football coach. How, how, when you're evaluated, what? How do you know you're doing a good job? I mean, is there, do you have metrics, which I would think would be difficult in your role? <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, what's the definition of a good job for you? A definition of a good job for me? That is a great, great, great question. Or a job well done, I a should say. A job well done for me. Well, I, you know, I can, I can tell you this. That's a hard answer, uh, question to answer yeah. because I can't take the credit for the great men that we have, yeah. you know. Um, but for me, when, uh, you know, if I'm there for a guy in a tough situation, for me, that's yeah. that's that's what it's all about for me. You know, when they're when they're in a tough situation, or maybe they're in a spot where they're not the most popular person. Yeah. You know, being there when someone's at their lowest or when they're struggling, um, and that's stuff that people don't necessarily see. You know, and that's okay. That's yeah, okay yeah, with me. Yeah, yeah. I usually like to stay behind the scenes, to be yeah. quite honest. And uh, 
that's a job well done for me. Um, I, I, you know, being there during the ugly times, so to yeah. speak, and, try, and, and being there and hopefully being used to bring them some peace and some comfort and really just being available to, to, to be that sounding board for the guys where they just need to vent or they're having different struggles, yeah. just being able to come and talk and to just be there to, to be a shoulder to cry on or just someone to listen to. All right. Well, we are going to do this again, not the next week because he's busy. You got, <laughs> but, Sean, I really do appreciate your time because it's a fascinating topic for me, and I think our, our listeners and, and readers of Golden Black and all Purdue sports fans need to understand a little bit more about how this all comes to pass. But uh, uh, I so much appreciate your time. Good yeah. luck in spring ball, and you're going to, and I know you, you get, well, you're with the guys every day no yes. matter what. Yes. They're just going to be on the field starting right, next right, week, and right, that's, right. that's a good thing as well. We're going to take a two-minute break and bring in Michaela Pat. We'll talk uh, uh, content strategy, but it's social media, all that she has going on. I, I don't, I'm surprised we got 20 minutes of her time today because she's a busy woman as well, and we appreciate that. But we'll take a two-minute break and be back on Golden Black Live. Thanks, Alan.